To build the pinion support assembly, we need the pinion support housing and its related components, primarily the pinion gear, pinion bearings, the bearing spacer, either a crush type or a solid type, the housing seal, the oil slinger, pinion seal, pinion nut, and companion flange. Let's take a closer look at these two bearing spacers. This is a crutch collar. This is the OEM standard. It sets the tension, the preload, and the distance between the two pinion bearings by actually crushing under tension applied by the pinion nut. The solid spacer sets the clearances by using these selective shims. The solid unit is preferred for most high performance and racing applications. To start with the assembly, we want to first install the front pinion bearing on the pinion shaft and then build the parts out as we go along. To install the pinion bearing on the front of the pinion, you want to lube the pinion shaft with a little bit of standard light weight oil. Put our bearing down this direction. Then we're using our punch and a hammer, we're going to gently drive the bearing down, going side to side. We want to make sure that we only contact the inner race of the bearing in here and do not hit the cage. We just go a little bit at a time, side to side, until the bearing is firmly seated against the face of the pinion. When the sound changes, the pinion bearing will be seated. Also keep in mind that if you use a vise to hold the pinion such as I have, we install the soft jaw so that we don't mar the extension of the pinion shaft. Next, we need to install the races in the pinion carrier. When installing the races in the pinion support, we also want to lube the pinion support where the bearing will be seated. You should never put things together dry. Now we have to put the bearing in with a taper coming to the outside. And we can use the old bearing as a driver, as we did earlier on the carrier. We need a block of steel or hard wood, and we should be able to drive the bearing down into place. Being careful, the first few strikes, the bearing race is going to want to cock in the bore. As you can see, this edge right now is in deeper than this side. We have to regulate how we strike the assembly until it's square in the bore and we double check and now it's looking pretty good. If we don't get it in straight we can damage both the bearing and the housing. Now that we have it in square we can continue to we can continue to install the bearing. The sound changed and the race is fully installed. We need now to turn the housing over and install the other bearing race in this side. We'll just repeat the same procedure we just used. The distance piece between the bearings, whether it be the crush type or the solid type, goes on at this time, in this location. With the crush type, as you draw down on the pinion nut, the collar is actually squeezed and displaces along this bead outwardly to set the distance between the bearings. You want to tighten the pinion nut down until you've achieved the proper preload on the bearings. Our information tells us that the preload on a used bearing is 15 inch pounds, and the preload on a new bearing set is 25 inch pounds. We'll show you how to check that shortly. After this spacer goes in, the pinion housing goes on, and then the rear pinion bearing. The preload 
specifications are determined without the seal in place. So first, we have to put our assembly together without the seal, then remove our companion flange and put the seal in. So now what we're going to do is put our companion flange on. We're going to use our old pinion nut. We're going to oil it on the threads and on the face. And we're going to install it on the pinion. Next, we have to use a breaker bar to tighten the pinion nut down until we've achieved proper preload on the bearings by crushing the collar. This takes a bit of effort, so we're going to rechuck the assembly with a companion flange in our vise to keep it from turning. As we continue tightening down on the pinion nut, we want to constantly check to see what our bearing situation is like. Right now, you can see we still have a lot of play in the bearing assembly. So we have to tighten up on the nut more, and with a crush collar, this takes quite a bit of effort. And constantly check for play. We're getting closer. We want to keep on tightening it until we just have zero play. Almost there. Okay, now we have zero play, but as you notice, we have no drag on the bearing. Now I want to continue tightening and checking till we have just a slight bit of drag. Okay, now as you can see, we're just starting to get a little bit of drag. Tighten a little more. Okay, now we have a little bit of drag on the bearings. Now we have to start checking with an inch wrench to calculate our final setting. To do that, we have to remount the pinion so that we can spin it in the carrier. Next, we're going to use an inch pound wrench to see how much drag we have on the bearing set. Using the inch pound torque wrench, we want to gradually draw it until we have the pinion turning. And as we constantly turn it, re read the resistance. We have about seven pounds, I'm sorry, seven inch pounds of resistance. With the new bearings, we want to build this up until we have 25 inch pounds of resistance on the bearing. We can either remount the pinion assembly the way we had it previously, or we can hold back on the pinion flange and continue tightening until we get our proper preload. Now we've tightened the pinion nut a little more. We're going to check our reading again. Notice as I draw up on the wrench, I reach just about 25 pounds, 25 inch pounds, and the pinion starts to turn. This is showing us that we've arrived at the proper bearing preload for this new bearing set. Now what we need to do, remove the pinion nut, remove the pinion flange, put the oil splash shield in, the seal, put the pinion flange back on with the new nut, tighten it back down, and recheck our preload. What we try to do here is set the actual pinion preload without the seal in place because the pinion seal will add drag and give us a false reading on bearing preload. The solid bearing spacer consists of a base unit and selective shims. We want to install the base unit on the pinion, then install a few shims, a thick one and a thin one, as a starting point. Then we're going to install our pinion assembly into the pinion carrier. Put our other pinion bearing in. Companion flange. Our used nut, oiled up. We're going to the nut down to a pre-described torque specification for this assembly. After which, we're going to take our inch-pound wrench and check for our bearing preload. As you can see, we have zero preload. This means we have to remove shim from the pinion spacer assembly, re and check again.
We remove the pinion from the pinion carrier. Now we want to measure the thickness of the shims that we had used. We had a combination of shims here. One shim was ten thousandths. The other was eight thousandths. This gives a total of eighteen thousandths. I noticed that when we, before we removed the pinion, we had zero preload, but we also had almost zero play in the bearing. So what we want to do is select a shim a few thousands smaller. This shim is 16 thousandths. It's two thousandths less than the combination of the other shims we had. We're going to try this shim next. Reassemble the unit, retorque the pinion nut, then recheck our bearing preload and try our luck. We will continue to repeat this process until we arrive at the proper preload with the proper pinion nut torque. The spacer is properly shimmed when you arrive at recommended preload with the pinion nut torque to specification. Once we've achieved this, it is time to remove the pinion nut and the pinion flange, install the oil slinger, the oil seal, then reinstall the pinion, the new nut is locked tight, and retorque it to specified torque. Once this is done, the pinion support assembly is ready for installation into the main case. Once you've established proper bearing preload with either the crush type or the solid bearing spacer, you want to remove the pinion from the carrier, install the, the rear pinion bearing, the oil slinger, and then the pinion seal. You want to first coat the inside of the seal groove with a light grease, Put some sealer on the outside contact surface of the seal, then install it into the pinion carrier. Once that's been done, you reinstall the pinion, the companion flange, and torque the nut to proper specification with Loctite on the threads. That will complete the pinion carrier assembly. We're going to use a block of steel you can use a block of wood to evenly drive the seal into place. Always make sure that you double check as you go along, make sure that the seal stays square in the bore. Otherwise, you could damage the seal. We torque the pinion nut to 175 foot-pounds as per manufacturer's specification. On a 9-inch differential assembly, Ford recommended a pinion bearing preload of 22 to 32 inch-pounds. That was with the seal installed. We set this unit to 25 inch-pounds with the seal removed. With the seal installed, it increased 5 inch-pounds. Please pay close attention to the specifications for the actual differential unit you're assembling. The pinion bearing preloads and the way you arrive at them varies dramatically from one manufacturer to the other. If your differential uses a pinion pilot bearing such as this 9-inch Ford unit, you want to make sure that if you're installing gear ratios of over 486, such as a 5 to 1 or 514 to 1, etc., you don't incur an interference between the ring gear and the pilot bearing housing. This is a 389 gear set. If you look in this area, we have a lot of clearance between the ring gear teeth and the housing. As you go up in ratio, the pinion gear gets smaller in diameter. The ring gear becomes thicker from its rear face to its, the edge of the teeth, and that puts the teeth of the ring gear closer into the center of the pinion. This area of clearance will diminish drastically. If you have interference, you want to sight along the path of the ring gear in that boss area. And by using a die grinder or a file or whatever you have handy, you want to remove 
the minimum amount of material necessary to establish 20 thousandths clearance between the ring gear teeth and the housing. Removing more material than necessary could weaken the housing. 